You talk a good fight. I hate to disappoint you, but ever since I gained my power, no swordsman has ever made a scratch on me. Go ahead, try to wound me. How long can you last? Hello and welcome to One Piece 101, the series that breaks down everyone and everything in the One Piece world. Today, we will be examining the former bounty hunter turned right-hand man of Sir Crocodile, Dars Bones. Dars Bones is a muscular, tanned, and very quiet man whom we first encountered as an antagonist during the Alabaster Arc. At the time, he was an officer agent of Baroque Works, the secret organization led by former Warlord of the Sea, Sir Crocodile. And as with all officer agents, Dars was assigned a codename, in this case being Mr. One. And once again, just with all agents, Dars sports this number on his person. In this case, in the form of a tattoo on his chest. This low, low number signified that Dars was essentially the strongest and most trusted officer agent, which you know when you consider the the rest of the Baroque Works candidates, yeah look I think Crocodile made a good choice. And that's not just taking strength into account, it's much more about personality. Dars Bones is a very level-headed, calm and focused individual, which is an invaluable quality in a line of work that includes espionage and assassination. In fact, most of Mr. Bones's prior experience is in the latter field, as he was an infamous assassin and bounty hunter operating in West Blue prior to his joining of Baroque Works. He was actually so revered that his reputation spread beyond the red line and into to the other seas of the world. And his effectiveness as an assassin is due in no small part to his devil fruit, the Super Super no Mi. This is a paramecia type fruit that allows its user to transform parts of their body into a metal blade, basically becoming the bane of every amateur swordsman in the world. It's a fairly simple fruit though, and Dars Bones generally uses it as one would typically expect, to turn his limbs and other extremities, such as fingers, into blades. However, Dars Bones does have some creative uses of his fruit, one of which being when he creates a blade on the bottom of his feet, essentially crafting himself a pair of lovely ice skates that he can use to travel about at increased speeds. Although a much more terrifying example of Darcy's limited creativity is an attack by the name of Spiral Hollow, whereby he creates spinning blades on his forearms that shred just about anything they touch, sort of like the drills used in excavation work. Not something you really want to be hit by as Zoro will gladly attest to. In fact, Darcy's Bones' most well-known fight was against the Straw Hat Swordsman during Operation Utopia, a ploy to plunge the nation of Alabaster into war in order to secure the ancient weapon Pluton. However, despite being dominant for roughly 99.9% .9 of the battle, Dars Bones was overcome by Zoro, who in a convenient moment of epiphany learned how to cut steel and swiftly defeated our tanned assassin. And after the defeat of Sir Crocodile, Dars Bones and his fellow agents were arrested by the Marines and incarcerated. Eventually, a squad of former Baroque Works agents led by Miss Goldenwick infiltrated the prison with every intention to free both Crocodile and Dars Bones. However, they both declined their chance for freedom for, um, the reasons, I guess. Shortly after, Dars Bones was transferred to the underwater prison Impel Down, along with Crocodile. Dars Bones was incarcerated on level four of the institution, also known as the Blazing Hell, and he just chilled there for a while. After Crocodile was freed from level six by Luffy, he offered to break Dars out, and Dars proceeded to join the Impel Down Jailbreak Squad, led by Luffy, Jinbei, and Ivankov. And as a result, Dars Bones then found himself participating in the Paramount War, initially facing off against the Whitebeard Pirates. But he and Crocodile later switched allegiances to helping Luffy out in general. In doing so, Dars protected Luffy from a strike against the world's greatest swordsman, Dracul Mihawk. However, However, he was defeated instantaneously in the process, signaling the second time a swordsman had gotten the better of him in a single strike. The crocodile intervened in the skirmish, saving both Dars and Luffy, although Dars would be rendered out of action for the remainder of the war. Three weeks after the Paramount War, Dars Bones would reappear on an unknown island in the Grand Line, looking rather schmick in a scruffy black suit. He and Crocodile were reading about Luffy in a newspaper, after which Crocodile abruptly proposed to Dars Bones that they head into the New World. Dars accepted the offer without a second thought, and he is presumably still at large in the New World today. Some more fun facts about Dars Bones. When Miss Goldenwick used her rainbow color trap, it was revealed that at one stage, Dars Bones had dreamt of becoming a superhero, which could also be a play on his devil fruit's name, the Super Super no Mi. Furthermore, the name of his devil fruit is the Japanese onomatopoeia for the sound a knife makes when cutting through something. Not to be confused with Bara Bara, aka Buggy's devil fruit, which is the sound of a knife hitting a board. In the Funimation dub of One Piece, Smoker states that Dars Bones was killed by Zoro during Operation Utopia. Pretty awkward, because he then reappears during the Impel Down arc, which, you know, I guess makes him the only character apart from Brook to ever come back from the dead in the series, at least according to the Funimation canon. And finally, a truly useless fact, Dars Bones, the super serious and notorious assassin, has an attack named Sparkling Daisy. How cute.
And that pretty much does it for Dust Bones. If you enjoyed this video then feel free to like, favorite or subscribe and if you are in any way keen on supporting this independent channel please do check out my Patreon, Discord server or Twitter, the links to which are in the handy description below. Finally please do comment with who, what or where you'd like to see featured in the next One Piece 101.